Okay, welcome to the Crownsman Show. We're back with another special edition from Mine Expo. Today, we are featuring Fenner Dunlop. And we've got two guests. We've got Jeff Normanton and Scott Friends. Uh, Jeff, we're going to jump right into it. Welcome to the show. Uh, give a quick introduction of your position, and then we'll jump into some topics and uh, what you got going on. Okay, good. Uh, good. Good to meet you all. My name is Jeff Normanson, uh, Divisional Vice President of Technology uh, for Fenner Dunlop Americas. And uh, I've been in this position uh, with Fenner now for uh, 45 years. So uh, most of that time involved with the design and development of conveyor belts. So have you got to go to a lot of mine expos over the year? This is a bit of a different one, of course. Um, but have you got to, I mean, there's been some crazy ones over the years. Have you got? Yeah, to- I've, been, I've been to several. And this one's a little different uh, because of the, the current difficulties we find ourselves in. But yeah. the show's been well attended. Uh, yeah. People have been uh, operating in a safe manner. And uh, I think everybody's found it very useful so far. What do you kind of want to highlight when you're when you're there, even personally, and you're talking to people? Sort of, what's your what stream of communication? I found a lot. Of the companies we're talking to, they sort of have different people with different strengths to sort of talk through the products. Where where are you at when you're here? Well, when we come to my expo, we try to bring a cross section of our our staff, not just the sales and marketing group, but we also bring some of our people from our monitoring division. And also our technical group, including application engineering, and uh, people like myself who are involved with the design and development of the conveyor belt product. So we have some on-call experts in the field, as well as our normal field sales personnel. So we can uh, we can offer uh, whatever is required for the customer, including you know up to our uh, CEO and uh, president for North America. So. It's a team team approach, and uh, we have the full team here on our stand in uh, kind of Dunlop in the Mine Expo. You know, when you think of conveyor belting, obviously things like durability, that's a big, that, that that's a huge thing. Um, and then there's the monitoring. But, and I'm not I'm not a conveyor. I've, I've rolled a few up in my day. That's about as far as my expertise go. <laughs> um, and, and taking quite a long time to do it because they're quite tricky things to deal with if you don't have the right machines. But what, what is sort of the durability scale uh, of, the, of even your, your own product lines? Well, we have products that um, obviously meet the requirements of all of our customers. And in, in some particular markets, the uh, downtime is the most significant um, cost factor, and um, particularly in uh, heavy-duty mining applications where the cost of a mine being stopped because of a belt failure can be extremely high. And so we kind of pride ourselves in kind of Dunlop that we have one of the most durable products in the market today. And we spend a lot of time in our design and development of that product enhancing the durability, which is measured by a number of different things, not just the wear rate or the rubber compound or the impact resistance or tear resistance of the compound, but also for the full durability of the composite itself. Mm. This comes right from the, the core of the, the fabric, which we uh, design, develop, and uh, create ourselves in our plant in uh, North America, Livonia, Georgia, which uh, we built that plant in 2008, and it is uh, still one of the most state-of-the-art facilities uh, in the world, not only North America today. So durability starts, but not ends with the carcass, the textile reinforcement. Um, it's enhanced by the quality of the rubber compounds that are utilized in the, in the belt, just like a tire. And uh, on top of that, we develop the, the fiber types and the uh, carcass constructions to optimize it for specific applications. And in mining, you know, the resistance to ripping, tearing, and impact are critical to the, the life of the product. And our X-series product, including Osflex, our dual crimp warp, uh, Nova X and Patriot, are kind of key to the uh, longevity of the conveyor belt product range that we have in front of them today. Uh, when we get into uh, much higher strength products, uh, more overland uh, type of applications, we have to use steel as a reinforcement. And when we use steel as a reinforcement, we use the arc to also uh, enhance the rip and tear resistance by using breaker fabrics. 
And, and these fabrics are also designed and developed by ourselves. And products like Usflex can be incorporated into steel cable to, to maximize the endurance that product can offer to the, to the end user. On top of that, we also have monitoring devices offered by our diagnostics group, which is based in uh, Virginia, in Bluefield, Virginia. And we offer a range of products to give the customer uh, also a much higher level of safety um, and failure resistance. Uh, these include our Eagle Eye Advanced System, uh, which monitors the steel cable performance. It can, it can search out any defects in the cable. Uh, we measure the magnetic uh, flux density, and look for any changes in that, which can be related to fatigue or impact damage. And the, the Eagle Eye Advanced also uh, helps us to prevent and stop ripping of the bell down the length of the conveyor because in steel cable reinforced products, you know, that can be something that occurs if the damage is extensive and uh, by uh, external bodies that have got entrapped between the belt and the pulley or by impingement just from the, the loading. And the Eagle Eye Advanced System, which we launched earlier this year, uh, is an advanced approach to rip detection and conveyor monitoring. Um, it allows us to provide the end user with a graphical interface uh, of the condition, the belt condition. It's really a health check on, on, the, on the belt that operates 24 seven. So any time of the day, the, the end user, the mine operators can uh, check the, the condition of the belt and ensure that it's operating without any um, critical failures. Uh, most recently, we've also added to this uh, application by looking at uh, the use of cameras and the assessment of damages to the conveyor cover. Um, but most recently, and most importantly, added the bird's eye uh, web-based application where the, the user can review the condition of his belt uh, by the web and using a, an app that can be viewed on a, on a, on a, on a phone, on an iPhone, uh, wherever it happens to be. It no longer has to be on the conveyor or the mine site, he can, he can take the time to, to look at his uh, bed's eye application on his mobile phone, whether he's on vacation, whether he's sitting on the farm, whether he's riding his bike, um, he, can, he can monitor the, the condition of the belts that are operating in his mind. And he can do this obviously remotely. It gives him a good traffic light system of areas that are green for no, no uh, cause for concern. An amber area where there may be some uh, occurrences of defects. And then, you know, if, if there's a critical event occurring, you'll get a warning and alarm. Um, so we think that the, you know, the, the prime use of bed's eye is going to allow the end user to be able to monitor his belt health at any time of the day, 24 7, at any location. And if you add to that, you know, a belt of the greatest durability you know, reinforced with the benefits of the X-series fabric, even in steel cable belts. We think that the combination of all these maximizes the durability of the products and gives in the total cost of ownership reduction that all of our end users are looking for. You know, I just wanted to ask, the um, when you talk about the end user, um, who... Who is, is communicating, like you, you just rolled, you roll, this has not been out that long. So how are you, do you have a distribution network or how, how are you connecting, how are you connecting the your customer base to a new technology product as a, as a belting manufacturer? How do you, how are you sort of connecting those two together? I mean, I'm sure it's part of the reason you're here, but. Right, sure. And, and it's by both. It's, it's through direct contact, uh, our group, our monitoring group out of Bluefield. Uh, intimately uh, involved with the end user themselves, uh, the mine personnel, and in conjunction with our distributor network as well, uh, where we go to market for the industrial product. So it's a combination of approaches. Uh, yeah, you're right. The bed eye is new. Uh, we have it uh, located in a couple of new customers, some of our key accounts, and we feel that there's been a lot of excitement about the opportunities it brings. Um, but it's a 2021 product, and um, 
you know, it's also linked with the new Eagle Eye. Uh, new Eagle Eye has been installed now in uh, several locations in North America in 2021. So it's taken off quite well for us. Um, it's the added insurance, really, for any end user. Yeah. Uh, of, above and beyond what the belt construction can withstand itself. So if you want the full package of protection, you know, we can offer, offer that not only from the belt construction itself, but also the monitoring and detection devices that will instantaneously guard against extensive damage and warn the end user when fatigue is occurring uh, due to external forces or um, any other critical events that may have occurred you know, during the normal life of uh, the operation. So we think in combination together, um, these tools enhance the durability and life expectancy of the, the product as a, as a total offering. And, uh, kind of excited to, uh, to offer those uh, enhancements on a continuous basis today um, because we think it stands us alone uh, in this marketplace. Do you, what about the size of company? I, I always wonder that when new technology kind of comes out. I mean, you're, you're serving, I mean, from the little, the little farmer to the biggest mine in the world, there's, there's a Fenner Dunlop <laughs> um, belt somewhere. So is is it for everybody? Does it does it fit into a you know a small? I mean, I know this is mining. We're talking mining today, but you know, a small operator in Alberta that's just got a little feeder, as opposed to a major operation. Does it fit in with both, or is there sort of some applications where it's maybe not applicable? Well, I think it depends on the, the product type and the application. You're right, and uh, are the lighter the lighter belts with the lower cost products, um, you probably don't need the additional investment in rib protection. And uh, on, on fabric constructions, uh, particularly when the X series is involved, uh, the ability to withstand rip and tear and impact are so high that additional detection devices are not always necessary. Some customers prefer to have both. They prefer to have the maximum durability in the carcass as well as right. the insurance policy of a monitoring system. But primarily, it's aimed at steel cable. Uh, products of the highest strength and the longest lengths. Uh, overland type conveyors that are running for several miles where the cost of downtime and the cost of replacement is extremely high. You just don't have a spare belt or spare belts available on site to replace at a, at a moment's notice. And the splicing of those products you know, can take several days, not several hours. Right. Um, so it is aimed, the, the monitoring is aimed at primarily the larger customers with a larger tensile rated products, but it can be of use. So we've tried to target also uh, our textile belt customers in this approach. It can be used for the smaller belts and um, can be used across every single product in the mine if the end user so wishes. Right. And as we go further on the development of beds, eye, it will interface more and more with the textile product reinforcement products, as well as the steel cable products. And, there's going to be further enhancements uh, to beds eye as we move forward and uh, enhance our textile belt uh, monitoring approach. So it is currently mainly for the larger ones, as you say. Um, but every belt, you know, has, belts have, have a cost. And the cost of downtime is critical to most end users, regardless of the size of the operation. So we think ultimately this is uh, something that uh, maybe one size doesn't fit all but we can focus the approach depending on the, the final application. Yeah. It would be um, one of these days, you know, we've, uh, you, you, Fenner Dunlop's been on the show before. I think if we do a third episode, we're going to have to partner up with one of your, one of your customers and actually show mm. that process of choosing the belt, the monitoring system, the whole thing. It would be quite interesting to actually see how all of that comes together. Yes, Absolutely. Sort of and we spend a lot of time with customers making sure that they get the right products for the right application uh, and the protection system all depends on what level of uh, security you would like and um, you know we see a trend in uh, ensuring that the belts can be monitored remotely and uh, ensuring that safety is obviously always the optimized uh, yeah. the best of the end user's ability i okay. think it's we think it's a great opportunity to to help our customers uh, look after the their investment, which 
you know, uh, on some of these higher uh, tensile products can be quite extensive. Well, it's the investment and the the, the amount of investment that is is literally st- uh, strung across them. <laughs> That's absolutely, 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 sir. Yes. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff, thank you. Um, I'm going to jump over to Scott now, but but thanks for walking us through it. I hope we get. I mean, this was sort of a uh, spur of the moment. There was sort of this demand for us to do something like this, and we reached out. And so I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, hopefully, we'll get to connect again and uh, unpack a few more things. Good. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, thank you. Okay. So now we're going to jump over to Scott, friends. Um, we're going to sort of get him to unpack his role, and then we're going to actually switch over to a little bit of market discussion. So we're going to bring Scott in now. Hi, Scott. Welcome to the show. Um, good to have you on. I mean, I'm uh, I'm meeting people on the fly today, so so good to meet you. Uh, just give us a little background of your position with the company, you know, roles and responsibility. Oh, yeah. Good to meet you. Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, we're here at uh, Mine Expo out in Las Vegas. Uh, I am the Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Fenner Dunlop Americas. We are a uh, division of Michelin, and uh, we uh, are basically, my responsibilities are uh, twofold. I wear two hats, the the day-to-day sales uh, and, and creation of opportunities for our uh, for our business uh, and then also uh, on the marketing side, so a little bit more of the uh, the strategy and the development of uh, materials to support the, our sales efforts uh, across the board. I guess it's, I mean, for you in your in your particular position, I mean, how much has been different, um, you know, from from just the, on a large a large scale company like you're in. Um, the, the difference in communication and travel and, I mean, even being at Mine Expo, um, obviously we would have loved to come down there. We couldn't sort of facilitate that. Yeah. How has changed? How, what, what's sort of been your world the last, the last couple of years or 18 Shh. months, I suppose. Right. Right. Uh, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, we're, we're glad to, to be here, but uh, we are still uh, battling the same challenges that I'm, I'm sure everybody in, in all industries are battling, which is, uh, it's it is a live show, but uh, I, if I look around here, uh, uh, there are some booths that are either uh, empty or spaces that aren't filled because uh, our counterparts from uh, other parts of the world. This is a global show, right. and it's a bit disappointing that it it really kind of has uh, has turned into a domestic show for this for this year. So we're happy to have the folks that are here. We're happy to be here, but uh, but in general, uh, I think it's a bit of uh, it's it's similar to just the whole experience that we've had as an organization, which is I think we went into 2021 thinking that. Oh well, you know everything's back to normal. Let's get out and travel and and uh, you know get uh, get things going again. But uh, it's been a little bit slower going than we had anticipated. I think we still have challenges with travel and and uh, with uh, getting in front of our customers. But on the flip side, we certainly learned a lot in 2020 uh, in terms of utilizing things like we're we're doing now, which is yeah. uh, you know virtual meetings and discussions. So. We've gotten very good at at kind of a hybrid approach, which is, you know, we are at shows like this, but I know for a fact we have a meeting tomorrow where we've got some folks uh, uh, in from our customers live, but then we're also going to be dialing in a couple of folks from, uh, you know, on a Zoom meeting uh, as well. So uh, it's uh, sort of the uh, way of the world now, and we're getting pretty good at it. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are going to stick. I when you said about sort of like it's like a start and st- uh, start and go and stop and it, yeah. it kind of reminds me. I was visiting my brother the other day and uh, his niece was got, got me to play the game uh, go go stop and someone stands in front of go go stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a little like that. It feels like exactly, exactly. And I think it's going to be more of that uh, before it uh, before it returns really to normal. Um, and uh, you know. But but it is the new normal, and and it's you know, necessity is a mother of invention, and so we've gotten pretty good at uh, responding and and figuring out ways to uh, to keep pushing business forward. So, um, the, you know, from a marketing tool development, doing a lot more with with uh, I mean, we were doing things with apps and and online before, but even more so now, it's it's critical, particularly things like sales tools, training, wow. especially training. Training. We love. Yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing beats being live with, with a customer who uses our products. 
to show them the differences and, and the benefits of our products and be able to hand them a sample and things like that. But honestly, it's it's a fairly close proximity uh, or facsimile, I should say, to uh, uh, being able to do it with these uh, you know online Zoom training sessions, which we've done quite a bit of since uh, since the start of uh, 2020. Yeah, it really is perception because we have, you know, we have a lot of customers of our own that they appreciate, you know, it's a CEO of a company um, and you ask them to take out, you know, travel here and it's, they're, they're losing a day. I mean, they appreciate that they can only have to spend an hour with us. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, yeah, so yeah for really sure. It depends on the perception of what they're sort of looking for out of that sort of business relationship. And I, I think right. that, that perception is changing. I wanted to want, I also wanted to ask you, Scott, about that sort of on the supply chain side of things. Um, you know, we're talking, I mean, rare earth mineral shortages and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. That must, I mean, that must be a challenge for you. A large scale company, major manufacturer, that must be an ongoing discussion as well. Absolutely. I, I think it's like I said before, with the expectation of just doing your day to day job, the, the hope was, okay, we're going to hit. 2021 and, and get a few months in and then things are going to start to get back to normal. Well, I, I think the expectation was we all lived through 2020 knowing that there were lockdowns and people weren't able to go to work and the people that were able to go to work and, and thank, thank goodness they were willing to do it. But we had the essential workers that were in the factories getting, getting things produced, but we certainly weren't running 24 uh, seven uh, to, uh, to keep up with demand. Uh, since the start of 2021, we've seen an uptick in demand. I think there was certainly pent up demand. There is uh, money flowing towards projects uh, for uh, conveyor belting expansions. Um, business is picking up, but we still face a lot of challenges. It's not back to normal. Um, and it probably won't be based on pretty much everything that I've been reading in the research we've been doing probably for, I would think, another 12 to 18 months to really get back to getting the reliability in raw materials that we need to produce our product. So our lead times have gone out. Uh, the, the price of our raw materials have gone up. We are proud to be a domestic producer. Every belt, well, when we say domestic and North American producer, so in the U.S. and Canada, Everything that we make in terms of the fabric that we manufacture for our belting and the uh, and the rubber compounds that we put on those belts are uh, manufactured in North America. But uh, like the, pretty much the rest of the world and the industries that we we work in, it's a global economy, right. and the raw materials that we get to go into those finished products, things like uh, natural rubber, synthetic rubber, polyester, nylon, steel cable. Uh, carbon black and a number of other chemicals that uh, that make up the uh, infrastructure of our belts uh, come from overseas, and uh, the challenges to get them to our shores <laughs> have been plenty. Uh, so it has been a struggle to uh, to keep up. I think everybody's ready to get back to normal, but uh, I, it, you know, our lead times reflect that uh, it's not uh, quite where we want it to be yet, and. I didn't even mention the labor side of things, but uh, labor is a challenge as well to get people who who can can work and and fulfill yeah. the shifts that we need them to fulfill to get uh, belt out the door. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's a strange it is a, it is a strange time if you're you know a large scale company or or a small scale company. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you, and I'm trying to remember what what it was. Oh, I was going to I, a thought came to my mind when you were saying about. Um, you know, it's, it's North American manufactured essentially. Mm -hmm. And you know, that you, that used to be a thing where you'd see, you know, made in America or made, or made in Canada or something like that. And it was more like a, almost a pride thing and like, mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to be this type of quality and that, but now it's sort of shifted to, I mean, just hearing the, if I was buying belting, I'd be going, Oh, thank goodness. Cause it's here. Yes. So yes, it, it sort of must have shift sort of that that value add has sort of it's it's almost ratcheted that up, I would think that that's a very good point. And, and it's certainly something that um, in these somewhat challenging times, it's never easy to, to tell a customer that, uh, that you've got to raise a price. And I'm sure it's the same for our vendors when they come to us and they have to tell us that, that, that they're raising a price. But we understand the reasons for it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's limited supply. It's higher demand. It's the the, the freight ocean freight charges are are, are through the roof. Um, but the good news is that being part certainly being part of the, uh, the Michelin organization, we have the ability to to procure raw materials in a way that uh, that thankfully maybe some folks uh, that uh, that are delivering completed product from overseas. They don't have quite the buying power that we do. So we have been lucky that we've been able to ensure some, for the most part, continuity of of supply. While the lead times have gone out a little bit, we are certainly uh, continuing to take orders and fulfill on deliveries of products. And uh, the good news is if we get those raw materials, we can produce them and get them out to our customers in short order. And we pretty pretty much only have to deal with the uh, you know, some of the domestic transportation challenges, which still are a bit challenging with some of the labor shortages and things like that, but certainly not the challenges that we're facing with ocean freight. If you're bringing something in from overseas, uh, a finished belt, for example, that's coming in from China, um, there just aren't as many boats and aren't as many containers available. And then there aren't as many workers at both ports, either the shipping port or the receiving port, to be able to get those uh, get those belts off of the uh, containers. So, yeah, some continuity of supply because we're a uh, North American manufacturer certainly has helped us in these challenging times. Yeah, uh, just I you know be- before we go and wrap the interview, I think we gotta we gotta swing it back over to Mine Expo 20, 2021. Yeah, um, what is sort of the main so what sort of the main product mining specific um, product lines that you're you're promoting there at the show? Well, it's actually a, a a great question and a great example because I just came off a meeting with one of our of our top mining customers, and uh, they're a customer that has um, utilized for many years a, uh, a traditional uh, plied belt offering uh, that uh, we're very proud of. Uh, they use our uh, um, uh, mine uh, supreme products for their underground mining applications, and uh, they're the MSHA approved fire resistant types of belts. And they perform very well for them. But one of the things that we're really focusing on at this show and just in general from our marketing perspective is the uh, the longer lasting uh, premium products in our product line called the X-Series. And uh, the uh, benchmark or, or the, uh, the, the main product in that portfolio is a, is a product called Usflex. And Usflex for the mining industry, certainly for underground coal mining, is uh, a version we call Mineflex because it is the MSHA approved fire retardant belt. And we were actually talking to them about converting some of their uh, their products uh, and uh, applications to the uh, the Mineflex products for a number of reasons, but uh, not the least of which is that they resist uh, rip, tear, and impact significantly better than our standard belts. And our standard belts, they're very happy with them and they've used them for, for many, many years. But we had an opportunity to talk to them and share with them some of the, uh, the data that shows that uh, they could have a belt at a similar price point, but uh, is going to last them in some cases, maybe you know twice as long to three times as long as, as they uh, experience with the standard applied belt. So that's that's one area that we're focusing heavily on at the show this uh, this week. You know what I I haven't said it for a while because uh, you know as you do more shows you sort of forget these little things but you reminded me of st- I one of the goals of this show at the beginning was to help people see the things that they just see passing by but don't understand and belting is definitely one of the, all of us have seen it all of us have been by one even people that don't work in the industry know a conveyor belt but you know um, you know getting Jeff hearing Jeff sort of unpack it and then you mm-hmm. it's very interesting to see just this this, this this big black <laughs> belt yes. you see everywhere, but it's it's there's so many different ones. I mean, like I said at the beginning of the show, I've only had the experience of tearing them out of mines, and, and I honestly hated them. <laughs> yeah, and I and I'll uh, I, I have a confession to make when I when I I came from a, a different industry, um, and uh, I've had a, a history of, of marketing and selling highly engineered products. And I'll be honest with you, I came into this one thinking, wow, well, this can't be all that highly engineered. It's, oh. it's black rubber belt, right? Yeah. But it really is uh, amazing, amazing that uh, yeah. the, the design and, and effort folks like Jeff have put in to developing products because really, I mean, some of these, and it's not just coal mining, but this mine expo really is anybody that's mining heavy materials. So, you know, gold, copper, iron, or heavy aggregates, 
And it, it is amazing to me that, uh, yeah, I think for, for a lot of years, it was, well, you know, that belt all, you know, that belt lasts six months. It's always lasted six months. And then we get a replacement and put another one in there. If you can provide those folks a solution that says this might last three years now, they say, oh, well, <laughs> you know, if you can design and engineer a solution like that, it really solves a lot of problems. Yeah. And then a monitoring system to make sure it doesn't, if something is going a little off whack, you, you don't, you don't, I mean, a shutdown, if you ever see a calculation of what it costs for like a, you know, a hundred, 200 person mine operation to do a shutdown, it's, it's staggering. So it's. Yep. You know. Copper mines, coal, mines, all of them. I mean, any operation, but certainly the, the ones like uh, that have continuous operations yeah. and, and uh, you know, really base their operations on the tons that they can produce in a day. That, yeah, even to be down for for an hour or two can be catastrophic. Not to not to mention days if you have a belt that say completely rips down the middle and you have to uh, you have to replace the whole thing. So I can shut down a mining operation for a couple of days, and that you know that's why we are continuing to develop these monitoring systems to allow for better uh, understanding of the performance of the belt and basically get out ahead of any issues or concerns that we might have. So, uh, so they don't have to worry about facing a shutdown. Yeah. I'm, um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm glad you got to come on because it's, you know, it's a part two and being live at a show and it, it's sort yeah. of a fun, our, our show, the Crownsman show started live on a trade show floor. So there, there's some irony now that we're, we're here in a command. This center. is great. Yeah. But it's lots of fun. You know, thanks Jeff for coming on. Thank you, Scott. Um, and, and hopefully we get to work together soon and, you know, possibly be on site with you and stuff there's lots of exciting things to do so yeah i'd love to do more with you we've uh, we've enjoyed it and uh yeah i wish you luck uh, with the uh with the uh, rest of your interviews thank you sir okay everyone um we are going to have links to fenner dunlop and some of the information that we've talked about uh thank you scott thank you jeff we're going to wrap this up make sure to follow subscribe share and keep doing what you do that helps us keep the show going uh thank you uh, everyone, we will see you on the next episode of The Crownsman Show.